As is the case across the nation, NGIT is deeply involved in the assessment of student learning. NGIT identifies student learning goals to its mission as the state's science and technology university. Offered by a faculty actively engaged in research, our programs are coherent and rigorous. As part of our self-study conducted by for the Middle States Commission on Higher Education, we're revisiting our program review process and creating an enhanced model that will serve as the centerpiece of student learning assessment. The program review process will demonstrate a commitment to developing a system for analyzing results, identifying areas of strengths and weaknesses, creating strategies for improving the learning experience, and implementing those strategies. This podcast presents a brief documentary on writing placement of admitted students. The podcast will stand as a layer of evidence substantiating NGIT's commitment to study of student learning environments. I'm Norbert Elliott, Chair of the NGIT Middle States Commission on Higher Education and Stuff Study, and I'm presenting this podcast. Our program review process at NGIT is based on the NGIT cycle of student learning described in previous podcasts. In this four-stage cyclical process, we identify the university's core goals as expressed in the NGIT mission and NGIT strategic plan 2010 through 2015. And we study the many ways that those goals are integrated into the university's programs. The cyclical model employs the NGIT program review process as a forum for curricular innovation and instruction and assessment as we seek to document our efforts to assemble proof that we're indeed paying careful attention to our university community. By using the term documentary, we mean that we will provide evidence of the NGIT engagement in student learning that both teaches others about our work and records the nature of that work, acts that are integral to the professorate. We seek to provide evidence that substantiates what is otherwise merely an assertion or a claim. A good documentary on student learning will provide layers of information, from the use of social media such as this podcast to a deeper explanation of the community under investigation so that anyone may drill down to further proof of an engaged effort. Any kind of documentary work as research itself is a continually developing record made in many ways with many voices. How will you know a documentary when you'll see it? You know simply that you're getting it, that you understand that the university is involved in case after case of involvement in the learning environment. Taken together, the documentary effort constitutes the response of a university in answer to that overwhelming question. Is the institution fulfilling its mission and achieving its goals? It's one such documentary effort that we're presenting here. We start at a place that's very simple, the home page of our Center for First Year Studies. Off that page is a frequently asked question page with a section for first year admitted students on writing placement. Here's the key passage on that page. And that passage is the center of this documentary study. Placements in first semester English courses are made on the basis of the SAT writing section of the SAT. If the SAT writing section scores are not available, students will be required to take their criterion writing evaluation to determine course placement. The criterion service is a web-based application that evaluates a student's writing skill based on persuasive and expository essays and, within seconds, provides school reporting and diagnostic feedback to both writing instructors and students. Now, this is really a stunning statement to appear in a web page. Why? First, the SAT, owned by the College Board, is an admissions test, not a placement test. And second, Criterion, developed by the Educational Testing Service, is an instructional tool using automated essay scoring technology, not a placement system. How did we come to this place? That story really begins in the summer of 1980 when Robert Lynch, now Professor Emeritus of English at NGIT, worked with New Jersey educators to develop a basic skills placement test to be used across all post-secondary institutions in New Jersey. 
That test was used across the state until Christine Todd Whitman, the state's governor from 1994 to 2001, dissolved the New Jersey Department of Higher Education, the state agency sponsoring the ETS-developed test. Now, while we'll get to the impact of the loss of a statewide placement test in a moment, a key event occurred beginning in 1980. NGIT has always been deeply involved in teaching writing, a movement begun by Herman Estrin in his many years of service teaching technical writing and advancing that field on a national level. Indeed, it might correctly be said that Dr. Estrin, who died in 1999 after serving as an educator for over 60 years, remains among the most beloved faculty members in the history of an institution. Because of Estrin's commitment to teaching writing, it was natural that assessing writing would be important to NGIT faculty. So when the opportunity came to develop a statewide system was offered, colleagues of Dr. Estrin, in this case Bob Lynch, stepped up to become part of what was an emerging national movement in writing assessment, a movement that involved other large statewide systems such as the California State University's freshman English equivalency examination led by Edward M. White. Now, the bottom line in the story is that NGIT faculty got really, really good at writing assessment, publishing books and peer-reviewed papers, presenting at conferences, working with colleagues across the nation, and all manner of collaborative research ventures. So when Governor Whitman dissolved the New Jersey Department of Education in 1994, NGIT faculty were confident that they could maintain the state tests, the New Jersey Basic Skills Placement Tests, without undue complexity. And they were right. Faculty concentrated on classroom relationships between teaching and assessing writing in the classroom with special focus on portfolio scoring. Variable models were created in first-year writing courses, in junior-level technical writing courses, and in the Master of Science program in professional and technical communication. The writing placement test went to a sort of maintenance mode and all seemed to perk along quite nicely. That was, however, until the spring of 2008 when Joel Bloom, Dean of the Albert Dorman Honors College and Vice President for Academic and Student Services, brought the writing group in and posed a challenge. The New Jersey Basic Skills Placement Test, he reminded us, was old. There was no real way to refresh the multiple-choice items without writing and field-testing new ones. And although the essays, scored by our instructional staff, remained key to placement, surely we should examine new technologies, such as automated essay scoring and the relationship of these new technologies to placement. After the usual mumbling and foot-dragging, we accepted the challenge and began by looking at placement patterns from 1998 to 2007. What we saw when we looked at the longitudinal data led us to action. While NGIT-admitted students met or exceeded national and New Jersey SAT verbal mean scores, now called the SAT reading score, in each of the 11 years of the study, placement in basic writing, a remedial set of courses, varied. In 1999, for example, 19% of admitted students were placed in basic writing, but in 2007, 30% were placed in basic writing. If there had been some variation in the SAT verbal score, this would have made sense, but the average score in 1999 was 534, and it was 535 in 2007. While admission scores were consistent, the placement system was not. It was time to dig in. And dig in we did. From the spring of 2008 to the time of this podcast, June of 2010, we worked with colleagues to validate the SAT writing section, not used for admissions here at NGIT, as our placement test. We've filed over 25 folders containing validation studies with Joel Bloom's office. Among those many studies, none is as convincing as the relationship between the SAT writing section and the student holistic portfolio score taken at the end of the first semester of coursework. In all cases, and an analysis of gender and ethnicity trends, the SAT writing section yielded statistically significant projections of prediction, that is, with an acceptable level of accuracy, the SAT writing section demonstrated a predictive relationship sufficiently solid to allow us to use it as a placement test. 
And for admitted students who did not take the SAT verbal or who wish to challenge placement, we've completed sufficient studies with our ETS colleagues to allow NGIT to be the first university in the nation to use the Criterion service for placement testing. Did it work? In 2008, we reduced the basic skills placement rate to 11%. In the fall of 2009, we further reduced it to 9%. At the present time, it appears that the basic skills placement rate will be approximately 13%. Across the three experimental years, we've substantially decreased the basic skills placement rate. In the classroom, grade patterns and portfolio scores remain consistent at the end of the first semester. Is it advantageous to reduce the basic writing placement rate? In a research university such as ours, with students exceeding state and national averages or nationally normed standardized tests, it is clear that the majority of students should find themselves in traditional first-year writing classes. Good story? We think so. In countless meetings and reports, we've informed NGIT shareholders about our research, and we've presented at national conferences with accompanying research papers under peer review. There are layers and layers of available information, and we can demonstrate our level of confidence, high confidence indeed, through our educational measurement studies. Our assessment processes are proving to be sustainable, and we've now integrated such placement studies into the research agenda of the writing research faculty. But of course, as with any really good story, ours is not over. Our experiments with automated assessment have led us to rethink writing in digital, mediated environments. So, we're currently undertaking curricular revision plans to engage our students more fully in contemporary writing practices, from blogs and wikis to podcasting. We're engaging early career researchers and graduate students in this research process as we report to a variety of professional organizations. And we'll begin to wonder if we can place our more advanced students in advanced classes through our new methods as we continue to improve our placement system, curriculum, and writing assessment learning framework. And so, our story began in 1946 when Herman A. Estrin joined the NGIT faculty. The rising action continued with the involvement of Robert E. Lynch with the state's writing assessment system in the 1980s. And the key point in this narrative is Joel Bloom's call for reformation in 2008. The denouement after the story's climax? There isn't one, like all good stories. This one keeps on going in a never-ending, postmodern sort of way. Pretty good story indeed. We invite our NGIT colleagues to present their own documentary studies of student learning assessment. The study featured in this podcast is one of many instances of organized and sustained assessment processes used to evaluate and improve student learning here at NGIT. We invite our colleagues to join us in documenting the existing culture of their programs and the students within them and to share their assessment systems, the goals, method, results, and efforts at continuous curricular improvement. Taken together, these documentaries will provide a valid, coherent picture of our NGIT community and its dedication to student learning and assessment.